Judge Larson, welcome back to Undivided. Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Well, are you sure you want to be on with a Trump supporting Internet pundit? Who, who said that? Is that you? The, the urbanist says you have oh. ties to Trump supporting Internet pundit Brandy Cruz. I wasn't aware we had ties. Do we have ties? No, I, not that I'm aware of. I, <laughs> I think, you know, there's a saying among trial lawyers. Those, If you have good facts, pound on the facts. If you have good law, pound on the law. If you have neither, pound on the table. Oh. And the problem, the problem is they don't even have a table to pound on. They're, and they're, they're trying to flail around and attack um, and uh, attack me because they want to mislead voters. And that's, that's, a, that's to me, with the, with the can, kind of campaign I've run where I've really worked hard to reach out to both sides, really acquired some really balanced endorsements, to have that have people resort to that and it's just clear indication that they that they want a stranglehold on the judiciary they want to use ju the judiciary for political purposes they want to, uh, the the judiciary to be to do their bidding and it just shouldn't be acceptable to the voters of our state. Yeah, there's a couple of things I want to uh, talk about that have come out, but a few of the things you just mentioned. You know, your opponent um, has the endorsement of Jay Inslee. He pushed that out. Uh, and he said, thank you, Governor Inslee, for endorsing my campaign. Your support is a tremendous honor and a strong testament to our shared vision for a better future. I look forward to working together to positively impact our community. And one of the things that strikes me about that is like the judiciary is supposed to be a check on people like the governor. So here it's like, no, we're working together. We have a shared vision. Um, so that kind of that worries me. Well, when we went to endorsement interviews with Democrats, um, he would tell them that they shared their values. I don't think I can ethically do that as a judge. In fact, it, not just ethically, but from a, from optics and everything else. I, I've never told a Republican I share their values. Anytime you see me talking, I say I cannot make political promises. All I can do is, is promise to follow my oath. That's all I can do. And so when somebody looks at, well, he's got all these Democratic endorsements. Well, the problem is, is that for judicial candidates to tell people they share their values and to get those endorsements, and then not reach out to Republicans at all, which is my, what my opponent didn't, mm -hmm. th that may be an indication he wants the judiciary to be partisan too. Well, and I'm trying to get the politics and partisanship out of it. One of these, um, this, this, there's this article written in The Urbanist, which, no, don't worry, nobody reads The Urbanist. I was only alerted <laughs> to it because I have my Google alert set to if somebody mentions me in, some, in an article that I can find out what they said about me. So this alerted me. Right. Um, but it says, so they're supporting, um, it's like an op-ed, they're supporting your opponent and say that he's backed by, they're saying this is a positive thing, backed by racial justice groups, unions, and other organizations fighting for a more just economy. Do you believe it's the job of a Supreme Court justice to fight for a more just economy? No, uh, no, because that's a legislative function, gubernatorial function, a uh, judicial function is not to do that. I think a fair and just judicial system is well within the purview of the courts, well within separation of powers. And I've worked very diligently to actually establish a fair and just system. And in fact, I'm endorsed by the president of the NAACP of Washington, Oregon, Alaska. I'm also endorsed by Washington Council of Police and Sheriffs, which shows again my balance of you have two sides that can't agree on anything, but they can agree on me. And that what does that show about... Uh, uh, and I don't mean to seem it's just it's just frustrating when you really try hard to just be a judicial candidate in the cleanest way possible. And then to have this partisan stuff be thrown at you at the last minute to try to mislead the voters is just it's unnerving. But at the same time, uh, it's um, I, I'm glad I ran. I'm glad I'm continuing to run because this is exactly the type of stuff I'm trying to get rid of. And I think they expose themselves for what they truly are, which is folks that want the judiciary to be partisan and to be a political arm of whatever uh, interest group they represent. Yeah, I mean, like an extension of the governor's office. It's, you know, this, this Urbanist article is just, it's interesting to me because I've never seen, and you know I've been covering politics in the state for a long time, I've never seen an article with this many like buzzwords used against a candidate. I mean, you name it, they're throwing it in there against you, saying that you're pretending to be this moderate. Uh, and the headline of it, I wanted you to respond to. It says, um, don't let billionaires buy Washington's Supreme Court. Vote Mungia. 
are billionaires uh, funding your campaign? Because I was looking no, on the I, PDC, well, and it's kind of weird because you your opponents raised three times more money than you. Yes, exactly. And I I wish I knew where that billionaire's <laughs> money was going. But the point is, is that his 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 campaign co uh, contributions come mostly directly from people that have a direct interest in the outcome of cases in the judicial system. If you look at mine, it's from people, everyday people. There's some lawyers in there, maybe one or two judges. But ultimately, it's uh, it's from folks that just want a fair and just system. And, you know, the other thing, too, this this concept that that somebody's running my campaign, if you work with me five minutes, you know that that that's impossible to 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 sway me whatsoever in terms of, of my integrity, what I value. Now, I have open mind, but I, it's my decision, not not uh, the decision of anybody else. And I control my campaign because ethically I'm responsible to do that. Nobody else controls my campaign. Nobody else manages my campaign other than me. Yeah. Well, and it's just when you just look at it and you look at the numbers, it's obviously a lie, but we've seen this kind of used and it's a scare tactic, right? Like, oh, big, scary, rich people supporting this person, so they must be bad. But not only has he raised far more money than you, um, I, I didn't find any billionaires in your donor list. Am I missing any billionaires? No, so no, the, 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 uh, the thing is, is I don't really watch who's donated to me. Cause yeah. I, judicial candidates, we can't ask for money. Yeah. And we have a finance committee that does that on my behalf. And so, um, and the way the judicial rules work is if somebody donated to me and their case is before me, the other, one of the lawyers can object and I can make a decision whether I should hear the case. There's a safety valve for that, mm -hmm. uh, built into the system. And so, the, the the sad thing about the person that wrote it wasn't the urbanist itself. It was a person outside of it. It's yeah. the same one. Yeah, that Austin he's, Field. He's a public defender that's never met me, to my knowledge, and never talked to me. Yet he made these assertions about my role with therapeutic courts that are just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, anybody that's in the judiciary knows that my paper in 2019 resulted in $30 million in funding coming to the courts of limited jurisdiction that... My work with therapeutic courts, my work with improving the courts is the Council on Independent Courts was created because of my work with helping courts across the state when judicial independence is threatened. So the uh, and I got the president's award for my judges association in 2018 for doing that. And so this notion that this person has never met me to spew this kind of stuff that's untrue um, and reckless, it's just it's heartbreaking especially when when somebody within a system that's supposed to be designed to love the truth, to love justice, for that person to write something like that is heartbreaking. Yeah, they're clearly trying to make it partisan because they believe if, you know, they can get it out there that like, oh, your opponent is the one that Democrats support because there's no letter next to your name that that would make it easier for him to win or something. But it's like, for instance, they go to great lengths to tie you to Brian Haywood, um, you know, as they spend millions in other things vilifying Brian Haywood, the backer of the initiatives on TV. I looked, Brian Haywood hasn't donated to your campaign. I didn't see a donation there from Brian no. or from his wife. So I'm, 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 I'm so confused as to what what they're trying to paint there. But you know, that being said, it shows to me that they're worried, right? Um, there's been a little bit of polling out in this race that shows you ahead of your opponent, but the vast majority of voters are undecided. And that doesn't surprise right. me in a race like this. Judicial races don't get a lot of attention on the news. Um, it's a nonpartisan race. So if they default to vote for one party or the other, this makes it harder to do that. So what are you doing in these last few days, Judge, to try to reach those undecided voters and convince them that you are someone who's going to look at the letter of the law. Well, with the limited money we were able to raise, we we're able to send a mailer out. We're sending texts, uh, appearing on shows like yours. And, and you know, the thing is, I'd much rather be talking about the positive reasons why I'm running and the things that we can do in the judiciary to make our communities better, to help save lives, because there are things we can do. And what's happened, and the reason I'm running, is the Supreme Court has some priorities. And and they they pursue those priorities with very much with zeal that affect the way we run our courts. But they've been silent when it comes to their uh, what happened, what's happening in our communities with addiction and mental illness. And there needs to be that leadership on that court to deal with that. And I've been very frustrated as a trial judge watching us flounder around in the trial courts, doing our best. But we're keep pushing people back and forth because we have no strategy. 
And that's one of the big reasons I'm running is because I've worked with the legislature. In fact, a pilot project is formed based on an idea that I've had about regional resource networks. There has to be early intervention. There's all kinds of things we should be talking about rather than making up stories about the demons that are going to, that, that, that supposedly run my campaign. And this is, that's what's more heartbreaking is that people deserve better when it comes to actually listening to what the issues are. And the Blake case we've talked about before uh, resulted in our whole state being put on its head because five justices wanted to uh, overturn our drug statute that had been upheld twice before and came up with arguments the lawyers didn't. Why are we talking about those issues? Why, why, why are we talking about the, somebody that hypothetically is, um, because again, because they want to take the attention off those issues because they know their vulnerabilities. Yeah, well, you um, see, that's a common tactic. I mean, you see it in other races, too, where it's about vilifying and scaring. It's not about the issues. It's about how scary and and extreme can we make the other candidate look to try to convince the undecideds to go in our direction. Yeah, and the, then uh, my opponents, uh, and he's very proud of the fact that he's endorsed by eight of the nine justices. And I was asked about that this morning in a different interview about that. And I said, well, it's really what the campaign's about. It's do the people want to select somebody the justices want or somebody that people need. I want to be the person that people need. That's what I'm, that's what I want to be. And that's what I hope I've been as a trial judge and I will continue to be as a justice. I'm not just going to occupy a seat on the Supreme Court. I'm not doing it for my ego. I was going to retire next year, but this is too important. There's too many people that are suffering because we don't have a plan because we are silent and we're deciding cases that are actually undermining us in the trial courts. So the, the, there are important issues that are being overlooked while, while people are throwing, throwing mud. Yeah. Um, Judge Larson, can you make your final um, pitch to undecided voters who might watch this and haven't made up their minds in your race yet? Well, I think I think it's just I, I just want I want to be on the Supreme Court, not just to be on the court. I want to have a positive impact about how our system of justice works. You know, dignity and respect, as we talked in your first, the first time you interviewed me, dignity and respect are as important to us as eating, breathing and sleeping. And we have to have a system that focuses on delivering that. Uh, we um, we can do so much more in the judiciary if we change our focus and change how we operate to do things more to serve people than we are now. Um, I uh, I want to I I think we're I also want to help us govern ourselves better overall. Um, my degree is in public administration. I'm a student of government, uh, and we're governing ourselves wrong. That's why people feel the way they do. We're not we're not doing it the right way, and and uh, it's about we've turned it into about, about power and power and uh, control when it should be about responsibility and duty. I took this job as a municipal court judge, even though I was at a large law firm, happy, but I took it out of sense of duty to my community because the court was in trouble. It's one of the most eye-opening things I've ever done, and why I want to fight even harder to make sure our system of justice works for our communities and our people. And right now that voice isn't on the court. And um, that's why it's so important that that I be that person that the people need. That's what I wanna hold myself to and I want people to hold me to is be the justice that the people need, not the justice, not the justice that the justices want. All right, Judge Dave Larson, he's on your ballot, everyone. Good luck to you on Tuesday. Thank you very much, appreciate it.